Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So um, I've been getting a few comments uh, about a particular subject. So I thought it might be a good time to just kind of go through what I use and just talk about uh, that subject in general terms. Um, the subject is uh, cutting oils and lubricants um, and the different one, the different types that you keep around and when to use one type and when to use another type. Um, also, uh, uh, we might just touch on uh, kind of machine lubrication just a little bit, uh, though that's almost a separate subject. Anyway, um, there is just so many products out there. Um, I can understand how confusing uh, it could be just kind of looking in the catalogs and, uh, and listening to the, the chatter on the web. Um, trying to get to some kind of decision, right? Um, so what I thought we'd do is I'll show you the ones that I use and why I use them and why I've come to use them and uh, just tend to uh, talk about my general thoughts about uh, uh, those kinds of things. Um, and you can take away from it whatever you like. Uh, this is by no means a, uh, a, an advocation for um, the best or the ultimate or anything like that. It's just what I use and why I use those. Um, so that you guys out there, whatever's available to you, you can make um, maybe a more informed choice uh, with the options that you have available to you. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around. We'll look at the, I got them all laid out here. Um, we'll, we'll look at them. We'll talk about each one a little bit and uh, kind of maybe pro-con uh, and dig into each one a little bit. Um, then I got a little demonstration that I'll do um, and let's just see how this develops and, uh, and um, see if it answers some of those questions for those guys out there and, uh, and um, when to use certain lubes and when to use other kinds of lubes. Okay, so let me get my apron on so I don't get all mucked up here and because uh, we're going to play with a little bit of oil and uh, let's talk about lubes and oils. Okay, so here's a, here, here's a display of all the stuff that I use. Um, and each one has its, uh, has its own uh, particular um, applications. Um, so let's, let's see, what do we want to start with? Um, let's, let's start with the, uh, the one I probably use a lot. Um, is this kind of straight up WD-40? Um, you guys see me using this a fair amount here. Um, actually, let's do yeah. We'll do them in order of, uh, of order of use here. So, um, so I use a lot of WD-40 for aluminum and um, uh, mostly for aluminum. Um, it's it's mostly kerosene with a little bit of lubricant in it and some water displacers. I guess that's what the WD stands for. So I'm not clear what the formula is, but it's mostly kerosene. Um, one of the reasons I use it is it's very light. Uh, you can spray it from a distance and it goes on. Um, the, um, it, it, it'll leave a nice finish on aluminum and you know other metals in a pinch. Um, and it's cheap and it's readily available. I don't have to order this. I can, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, I can go get some at the hardware store and, uh, and I'm off and running again if I run out. Um, the smell, uh, w one of the issues with, with uh, some of the choices here with some of these, uh, these cutting oils is their smell. And, um, you'll find that there's a, uh, a, um, a lot of personal preferences when it comes to that. So when this gets hot and, and vaporizes on, on a hot cut, um, the smell changes. And uh, all of these do that. The smell changes when uh, they touch very, very hot metal and they, and they vaporize and smoke a little bit. So, you know, if you open this jug up and you sniff what's in there, yeah, it smells pleasant, okay? Um, but what does it smell like when it touches metal that's extremely hot? Okay, because it changes. Now, um, and for me, that's one of the things, uh, you know, you're swimming in this stuff, so how it smells uh, actually, you know, makes a difference to me. Um, you know, across the board, yeah, there's performance differences between all these things, but uh, um, 
you know, for average work, uh, you never even notice it, okay, or you rarely notice it. Um, you know, the, the huge performance differences. So anyway, I like WD-40 for aluminum and uh, uh, magnesium and things like that, uh, uh, light metals, um, brass a little bit, uh, you know, things like that, just kind of light, uh, light cutting. So anyway, that's, that's WD-40. Um, so now, when I got my milling machine, I got some lubes with it, and this was one of them here, this Kling uh, light thread cutting oil here. And uh, it says recommended for aluminum stainless, blah, 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 blah. So this is what I have in my little, uh, my little cups with the, with the brush. And, and we're going to show viscosity here. And you can kind of see that. You know, it's a, it's a thicker material there. And what I do is I, I thin it a little bit uh, just so that it, that it drips a little quicker off of the brush. Um, and I thin it with a little bit of uh, WD-40. And uh, that goes in my... Uh, that goes in my Spillmaster cups. Actually, I should grab one of those. Well, um, yeah. So that goes in my little Spillmaster cup. And uh, yeah, I thin it a little bit. So, uh, and once again, that's just personal preference and it's an application, you know, it just uh, helps with application, okay? All right, so um, anyway, uh, I've never, I had never used this before until I got this jug. And um, um, it turns out that I kind of like it. Uh, it's got a reasonably pleasant smell. And when it gets hot, it, um, um, it, doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't smell bad, okay? Um, and another secondary thing here too is sometimes you're, you're machining parts and there's a, you know, there's a little film of oil on them and you may wipe it off before you go over to the welding bench. But Many times there's some of this down a threaded hole or something like that and you're welding next to it and smoke comes out of that hole. Um, so to me that's one of the tests um, actually is how is it when it's really hot? Uh, because some of uh, none of these in particular but uh, some oils get a very very acrid uh, smell that really kind of attacks your sinuses a, a little bit or me at least. Um, and it's extremely unpleasant when uh, the smoke from highly heated uh, certain types of oils uh, uh, comes off. Um, and you know, a lot of these we're using as cooling uh, uh, during the machining process. So we, um, you know, it, it matters how they behave when they're hot. Okay. Anyway, this is cling. Um, it's a little hard to find. I kind of sniffed around a little bit, and uh, um, I. I couldn't find it, uh, you know, any of the uh, kind of uh, name, I don't know, uh, what do you call it, the tool and uh, supply houses, uh, um, you know, their listings, and none of, none of them less, le 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 come on, Mr. Wizard, um, none of them listed it. Okay, now this is, uh, this is chlorinated here, okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along here. Um, so anyway, this is pretty good. I thin it a little bit and I use that for tapping and parting and, uh, um, you know, light drilling, uh, in the mill, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So along, along those lines, uh, very similar viscosity and, uh, behavior is uh, Relton, uh, rapid tap. This is pretty common. Um, um, once again, it's, uh, oh. I had it backwards there. Heavy duty cutting fluid, um, and I believe this is chlorinated also. Um, I don't know if it says it or not. Um, yeah, okay, so shipping name, uh, so it's paraffin, which is wax, and, um, uh, and it's chlorinated, okay? So chlorine and sulfur are your friends when it comes to cutting. Um, unless you happen to be doing certain materials, okay? So when you're doing titanium, uh, chlorine's a no-no, okay? Uh, real critical stuff, um, typically they don't want any chlorine. Um, and uh, maybe parts that are uh, uh, gonna be used for high vacuum service, I think chlorine's, uh, um, you know what, I, I need to double check that, I'm not positive on that. So anyway, uh, both of these have chlorine in them. These are very similar. This is readily available. Um, it's it's pretty cheap. I think you can get a, a gallon of this for uh, 
You know what? I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. So, um, okay. So, those, and I use, uh, um, actually, I've been using this more. I borrowed this from work um, because this is one of my favorites here. We, we use this at work a fair amount. Um, for me here at home, um, this cling has replaced that just because I have it. And um, like I said, I probably won't be able to find this again, so I'm gonna switch, be switching back to that. So, okay, so I'm gonna change the camera around because I can only shoot so many minutes uh, um, on this high def, uh, you know, in one shot. So let me change the camera around and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more here. Okay, so I moved that around and we're back. Okay, so the, the next one, um, so we've talked about those three right there. Uh, the next one that I use uh, regularly is this, let me, uh, I'm all Mr. Clever here with these trays, but uh, so the, the other one um, uh, that I've been using a, a fair amount here and you guys see me using is this, uh, uh, this water soluble stuff. And um, it's, it comes as a similar viscosity to this, but it's soluble in, in, uh, in water and it makes the white stuff here. Okay, so you mix this up, um, you know, typical ratio for machining is, you know, six, eight percent, something like that, um, uh, concentration, okay. Um, I tend to just mix it up stronger, um, and, uh, and you can actually use this straight, uh, and it works pretty good straight, okay, and it is water soluble, which is kind of nice because it washes off the parts pretty good. Um, the advantage of this material here, okay, is it cools better, okay? So if you're generating a lot of heat, uh, big turning, uh, big, uh, uh, big drilling, uh, you're, you're making lots and lots of heat, this is, this is your friend here, because it's mostly water, and water is really, you know, your best coolant, okay? Yes, these cool, but not as good as water, okay? Um, so if you're making a lot of heat and, uh, uh, and you want coolant and some lubrication, that's why we use uh, water soluble. And, um, and you can spray it or flood with it or whatever. Um, and that's its kind of claim to fame there is uh, that it's just better coolant. Okay, now under high pressure, um, you know, tapping and, uh, and threading and things like that, these, these heavier lubes, um, higher viscosity and uh, uh, this probably has chlorine in it too, uh, chlorinated and uh, oils with sulfur in it uh, will produce better finishes uh, in, in general, okay? Not absolute, but in general. Anyway, there's tons of choices in, in water soluble stuff. Um, guys worry about uh, bacteria growth and things like that. So, you know, if you have an open sump and you're doing certain kinds of materials and whatnot, sometimes you can get a, a foul smell. But most of these have um, bacteria sides in them or whatever that kill that stuff off now. Um, early on, um, you know, in the early days of uh, water soluble uh, oils, you know, a lot of creepy crawly bugs got in the, uh, there and made some pretty stinky stuff. You know, most of these now uh, are pretty good. And if you keep them in closed containers, this is a complete non-issue. Um, it's kind of open tanks that have uh, uh, aeration and air, air activity with them that, uh, that you start running into trouble. Um, so this stuff, never had a problem with it. Uh, there's, everybody should have some water soluble in their, in their arsenal uh, just because of the cooling uh, advantages uh, with that material. So anyway, you can see it's very thin, um, you know, it's water-like, just slightly thicker than water, um, but it, uh, it cools really well, okay? Um, so anyway, that just happens to be the one I use. Uh, it smells pretty good. This, to me, smells a big deal. And when the water evaporates, what's left behind? That's the other thing about um, water soluble that uh, um, that people forget about. So you know, you got a machine, and you just did a bit of bunch of flood cooling, and uh, um, that water you know evaporates or goes off as steam or something like that. Uh, you know, what's left on the machine? Is it relatively 
clean or does it leave a gummy, sticky, ooky uh, residue? So that's how I qualify uh, water-soluble uh, um, materials, um, water-soluble lubes and oils. Um, is, you know, residue and smell, typically. You know, performance is important, obviously, but, uh, um, you know, if, if you're contaminating all your fixtures and vices and they're getting uh, gummed, uh, gummed up, you know, um, the stuff would have to be pretty damn good uh, to be worth uh, the headache of that. So uh, um, a lot of it, you know, is concentration, too. You can run lighter concentrations. Anyway, that's an advantage with that, that this... This one gallon here makes a lot of that, okay? So uh, that, I believe you can get it in pints, but uh, um, anyway, once again, this came with my machine. Uh, I'd never used this type before, but uh, it seems to be fine and it smells pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with it. All right, all right, so let's get this out of the way before I spill it. <laughs> okay, um, the next one is, um, let's, let's talk about that one there. Um, this is real thick. This is kind of like honey. Um, and it says extra thick. McMaster Car sells this. Um, and um, so we use this material here when you're, when you're doing high pressure uh, things. Uh, threading um, and tapping are a real good examples. So if you have difficult materials, uh, hard materials or deep holes or um, 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 you know stainless steel like I said difficult materials um, this is this is your best uh, material excuse me for tapping this works pretty good but under higher pressure this works better um, you know once again I don't know if I didn't look to see if this is this is chlorinated uh, like I said, chlorine and sulfur are generally your uh, um, your friends when it comes to cutting uh, cutting fluids. Um, a word of caution is uh, some materials stain um, and when exposed to uh, uh, chlorinated and um, um, sulfurized cutting oil. Now this is sulfurized cutting oil here, and uh, we'll show this in, in a minute here. I just went to the hardware store and I got that because. I didn't really have any sulfur cutting oil here or stuff that uh, the dark, heavy, uh, um, you know, classic uh, sulfur cutting oil. So when you're doing brass and copper, you got to watch uh, uh, your sulfurated uh, uh, cutting oils because when they heat up, they can stain copper and, um, uh, and brass and uh, the staining is, uh, is difficult to remove. So, all right. So once again, I think I'm going to change the camera around a little bit and then um, um, we'll kind of talk about the next uh, the next next one here so the last one I want to talk about is this one here um, this is this you know ace hardware uh, um, you know thread cutting oil you know this is your kind of classic uh, stinky uh, sulfurated well, it didn't smell too bad actually um, sulfurated uh, cutting oil um, you know, like you'd see in the uh, the pipe threader at Home Depot. You know, when they're they're flooding the pipe cut, uh, works good for high pressure and threading, uh, and it's cheap. I think this was six bucks, but it's a six or seven bucks. It was a little container though. Uh, the price, you know, per unit went uh, went down. If you got a bigger container, I bought a small one just to have around. Um, so you know, one thing is to have a few of these around and. Um, uh, so if you're having trouble, you know, maybe this isn't working for you, you can go to this or you can go to this and, uh, and get some good, uh, better results. Um, so having a couple of choices around is a good idea. You don't need giant volumes of this stuff unless you're a big, uh, big machine shop, you know, then you're buying 55 gallon drums of this and, uh, you know, five gallon pails of that, you know. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I have a little card here, and what I thought we would do is uh, uh, just look at the viscosity differences between all these materials. So what I'll do is I'll put a little drop, um, I'll put a little drop of each one of these materials down here, and then we'll tip this up and we'll watch them run down. And you can see their colors uh, with the white background, and you can kind of see their relative viscosities. Um, now the mobile one here, I'm just going to put it on straight. 
because we know it's basically water-like when it's mixed up, but to see what it looks like uh, out of the jug there um, um, will be will be useful. Um, so before we do that, um, let's see, can you see the, uh, yeah, you can see the, uh, so this is just whey lube, okay? Now this is the other thing that everybody should have around. Uh, this is your, your basic machine oil, okay? And this is just Joe Blow brand generic from McMaster Car, gallon of whey lube, okay? So having the exact, you know, oh, I have to have mobile Vactra, blah, 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 or Shell Telus, yada, yada, yada. It's a bunch of baloney, okay? You know, whey lube, what whey lube is, it's for machine ways. It's sticky, weight, it's sticky, heavy oil, okay? 220, uh, um, what do they call that? Sabolt, I think. Uh, it's a viscous Sabolt unit, something or rather, I think. I can't remember the what that exactly stands for. So that's a measure of its viscosity, okay? So the idea is you put this stuff on your ways and it stays there, okay? It kind of clings to those flat surfaces. And on a boring mill where you have, or a, a vertical mill with a, the, the, the Z ways or whatever, it stays, a film stays on there. It doesn't just run out into your, into your chip pan, okay? Um, and all it is is to, is to keep those surfaces lubricated, okay? And the different, you know what? You won't be able to measure the the difference between uh, mobile Vactra and this stuff. It's not in within our capability. Okay, so you know if it's sold as whey lube, you're fine. And if you can't get your hands on whey lube, just use something. Okay, um, any kind of oil is better than wishful thinking. Okay, now when you get into spindles, okay, when you get into spindle lubrication, that's a different game. Okay, because you got bearing clearances. Um, you've got some other magic going on in there, okay? So you can't just use this for everything, okay? And, um, um, you know, once again, better to have some kind of oil in a machine than no oil. And, um, and um, it's, uh, you know, don't run it if you don't have any oil in it. And if you have to run it, you're on a uh, desert island or you're out in the middle of the ocean and uh, you got no no lube for your lathe other than um, uh, motor oil or something like that, frickin' put it in there and go, right? Um, and, uh, you know, obviously follow manufacturer's recommendations, but it, you, there's no need to do backflips over it, okay? Um, those are recommendations, and there's gigantic charts of equivalencies of these oils, okay? Anyway, that's just Joe Blow, Plain Jane, Way Lube. Um, I don't have any light spindle oil here. Um, I'm out right now, and uh, I usually buy that in little pint bottles because you don't use it very fast. Um, my uh, my lathe, uh, the headstock bearings and spindle bearings are lubricated by the. Uh, uh, it has a filter and pump system that lubricates the bearings first, and then the gearbox, and then recycles it and filters it again. Um, so that's a that's a different lube. Uh, uh, in there, it's more like a hydraulic oil. Okay, so let's do our little viscosity thing here and uh, we'll show those different viscosities and then we'll probably talk a little bit more. Okay, so we're almost there. I just started putting them on there. Didn't need to film the whole, uh, the whole <laughs> dribbling. I'm just putting one, one drop on on there of each material okay and just let them sit for a second kind of spread out and you can see the relative colors there actually let me uh let me zoom in a little bit like that okay so you can see the relative col colors of these materials and now i don't know if you can see the <clears throat> you know, how, how these have kind of spread out a little bit too. So I just put that one on there. That's the thickest one too, but you can see the circle is kind of small and it's humped up. It's pretty thick. This is very light. And then these three are very similar in viscosity, different, different colors, okay? So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna tip it up here and then we'll watch these kind of run down and you'll get a sense of uh, dynamically how uh, Excuse me. Um, 
you know, their viscosities, okay? All right, here we go. So we'll give them, uh, we'll give them a little bit of time there. So, you know, this is your lightest material here. It's taken off pretty good. Um, these three are very similar here. Um, now those two are similar. That's a little thicker there. This is the one that, that I use uh, because I got with my machine and I thin it a little bit. So um, I thin it and it, it actually becomes more like that one as far as viscosity goes. So, um, but you can see what's going on there. That one's <laughs> it's barely moving. That's thick, gummy, gummy stuff. It's like it's hard to clean off actually uh, off of the taps and out of your holes and stuff. So that's another uh, consideration with these materials here. So, I don't know, what's that been, 30 seconds or 40 seconds, something like that. Um, you know, ultimately they'll all drag out uh, um, all the way down, but that just gives you an idea of the, uh, the rel relative viscosities of those uh, uh, five materials there. All right. Actually, uh, you know what, you know what I'm gonna do just for fun? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to put a blob of uh, of uh, whey lube on there too. Let's get some here without glopping my glopping myself up. I don't know if that's going to. Oops. So this is whey lube going down right now here. And, you know, one of the characteristics of whey lube um, is that it has, uh, it has tendrils. It's kind of like spider webby. Um, so if you, if you put a little uh, bead of that down, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to, I'm going to rub this through, I'm going to rub this through the whey lube here. And uh, actually, you know what, so people don't get fouled up. Just so everybody remembers, right? So I'll, I'll, zo oops. I'll zoom in on that a little bit. My test is, is becoming messy right now. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit on that and then we'll see if we can pick up those tendrils. All right, let's see if I can do this without blowing it here. Yeah, so I can see them from here, so hopefully you can see them. You see those little threads that are connecting? That's a characteristic of whey lube. And that it's a stickiness that allows it to stick and kind of stay on a, uh, on a vertical surface. So uh, anyway, so those tendril, yeah, look at that. It's like, like I said, like kind of like spider webs, you know? Okay. All right. Okay, so um, when I was uh, recording uh, part of that, uh, lubricant video. I, I thought this might be an interesting test. Uh, I have no idea how this is going to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this is a little hot plate here. I'm going to heat this up to maybe 500 degrees. Um, and I got a thermometer here that I can stick in that little divot and kind of verify the temperature since my, my knob is kind of jacked up there. And then I got a little, uh, a little divot there that I made with a ball end mill. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop a little bit of oil of these different oils that we're evaluating, or different cutting oils that we're evaluating in there. And we're just going to heat them up and get them hot and see what, uh, see what happens. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn this Mamaluka on here. So I'm going to assume that that's uh, basically on there. So I'm going to see pretend that that's 500 and then I'll let this and yeah, it's already warming up I'll let that get hot and then I'll drip some oil in there and um, it will probably just do three of them um, uh, and uh, see what kind of residue it leaves and what kind of smoke comes off of them okay so I think we're pretty close now let's check our temperature here let's stick it in that little pocket there okay 300 400 
500 or yeah so we're over 500 530 okay it's slowing down now 550 turn it down just a little bit so it's at 575 560 yeah okay five I'm gonna call it 570 which is uh, a little over 300 C okay all right and then I have the uh, the the different lubes we're gonna try here the cling the relton and the tap magic and I'm just gonna dip a little bit of each one out of the uh, thing here I don't want too much I just want a basically kind of a single drop okay so there that goes yeah, we'll do these one at a time. Okay, you can see the smoke coming off of that. And we're just going to let it do its thing in there and see what happens. Um, so it's darkening up. It looks like it's leaving a residue there. The smoke uh, smells uh, waxy to me. Uh, and I believe it's paraffin based there, uh, you know, which is basically a wax. Um, looks like it's leaving a little residue on there. I'll, and I'll zoom in a little bit on this too. Um, we'll wait till that kind of smokes out and does its thing there. I'm going to try for less of a drop, I think, on this next one here. This is going to be our Relton here. That doesn't take as long. Let's uh, verify temperature here. So, see, we're on the uh, Celsius scale right now. Close to 300, 80, 90. There's 300 C, 305. All right, slowing down 308, 9. All right, 320. Uh, let me turn this down just a whisker here. Okay. All right, so like 320 C. All right, and we're gonna look at that residue there uh, in a minute. Okay, here's here goes the Relton. Try to get me a little tiny little drop here. Okay. All right. The smoke uh, kind of smells similar to the uh, this uh, Tap Magic, waxy. It went quicker. That was a smaller drop. Okay, the residue looks a little different there. All right, let's do our uh, do our cling here. That one smoked out pretty quick there. All right, that's the cling. Ooh, it's more uh, the smoke smells more woody. Uh, <laughs> kind of like tasting wine, right? <laughs> Hmm, a oh, floral note. Um, it smells more, it smelled more like wood to me than, uh, than, than wax. Looks like the residues are roughly the same. I don't know, they all smoked roughly the same. I, I might expand this and we might try some of the other ones too, so, uh, um, this is kind of actually an interesting test. Okay, so this is the cling. This is the cling pocket. This is the Relton Rapid Tap pocket. And then this is the Tap Magic Heavy uh, Extra Thick pocket here. Okay, that, I'm just gently rubbing it with the stick. It's still under heat. That looks like it's rubbing off a little bit. Uh, looks 
like it might be on there a little better. Same. That's enough to smoke my stick here. All right. Um, let me prepare another sample, and we'll maybe we'll do a different another one too. Okay, so here we are again. I made another sample plate real quick. So we're a little over 300 C right now, 304, 305, somewhere in there. Okay. On this one, we're going to test the. Uh, we did the cling, the Relton, and the Tap Magic, or. We're gonna do the uh, the Ace Hardware uh, thread cutting oil here. And there she goes. Yeah. Pretty good smoke. This was one of the lighter colored ones. Uh, actually, uh, I'll bring that chart over again too to remind us. Uh, I like the residue on that one. Uh, it probably will darken as it sits there on the on the hot metal. Okay, and then we have the water soluble here, uh, which is a pretty it's a pretty stiff mixture here. Um, I'll stir that up a little bit, and we're gonna put a little drop in there. Come on. That's interesting. <laughs> it doesn't want to. Uh... Since it's mostly water, oh, that's kind of interesting. Since it's mostly water, it's beating up and boiling off. but not really leaving any residue there. Let's, uh, let's try to get a little more in there. This is uh, suboptimal for, there we go. So no, not much smoke, just a wisp of smoke coming off of that. This is well above the boiling point of water here, so, uh, um, okay, so, yeah, okay, we got a little bit of oil uh, residue in there. Okay, let me zoom in on that and we can look at that. Okay. So this is the, uh, the mobile water soluble here, and then this is the Ace, Har uh, excuse me, Ace Hardware thread cutting oil. Um, anyway, um, uh, and then here's our uh, here's our other ones here, and there's the residue from those. Actually, let's see if we can get them all in the picture there. This thing's still hot. <laughs> I'm trying not to uh, trying not to uh, fry myself there. Okay, kind of interesting. Okay, so the last part of this test here, um, there was our our viscosity test there and our colorations. And then here's our uh, our heating test here. The last thing I want to do here is I have some uh, some denatured alcohol here. I'm just gonna wet a swab here and just give it a couple of swipes in in each pocket and see how it cleans up. Okay, so I don't know that was ten little swirls in there or something like that. So it's got some residue, it's coming loose, but it could use some elbow grease. So that's the cling. All right, a freshie here. Got a fresh one, same thing. I'll moisten it, and then we'll do the relton here. That one's in there good. All right, no progress. <laughs> All righty. And then the uh, the tap heavy. Now those those also sat under heat longer too. So you know I don't know how uh, subjective my test is here. It's just kind of relative uh, 
Yeah, same thing here. That one's like on there like a monkey's uncle there. Yeah, that one, man. Yeah, it's in there pretty good too, so. Okay, uh, the Sharpie's coming off. Okay, oops. And uh, this was, that one I splattered on there. This is the mobile here. Um, the least residue, that was the water soluble. Let's see how that does. Yeah, that's, once again, it's in there. Okay, and then the last one is the, uh, the Ace Hardware uh, thread cutting oil. And it's got a good residue. So this is one of the one of the things that I was trying to talk about earlier was, you know, when this stuff gets on hot metal. Now this is pretty hot stuff here, um, but you know the parts get pretty warm. They get above the boiling point of water easily, right? Um, you know, if you're not careful, you can leave some of this residue that's difficult to get off. Uh, oh, that's maybe maybe that's a better test is to oops put a little alcohol in each one and let it sit for a little while um but it, they'll leave a residue and uh that uh, is potentially difficult to remove so that's something to uh, uh evaluate uh when when choosing a uh, uh a cutting oil or a coolant uh, uh for use in the shop all right so i know how inquiring minds want to know so the denatured alcohol has been sitting in these pockets for about, I don't know, 10 minutes, something like that. So I'm just going to go back and try one more time. Oops. Okay, that, so that's an indicator of how hard I'm pushing. All right, that one's starting to free up a little bit. That one's on there good. This is the best one. This is the mobile here. And then the Ace Hardware. Yeah, it's on there pretty good too. Okay, anyway, that's it for this. Um, so no residue is the mobile winner. And um, second is, I don't know, the Ace probably for, well, I don't know, that's a general residue. This looks like it was gonna come off okay. And then maybe the Relton, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of hard to hard, kind of hard to uh, put a score on them. So, okay. So that's about all I want to talk about uh, cutting oils and lubes uh, in a video. So you saw what I like and some of the reasons that I that I like them. Um, and like I said, there's you know, yeah, all of these things work. Okay, or else these companies wouldn't be in business. Okay, so um, uh, what works best for you? You know, I don't know what you're doing, okay? So I found these materials over the years and uh, I find that they work for uh, the general cross-section of, um, uh, of work that I do. Um, if you were a job, or excuse me, if you were a production shop uh, doing a specific operation on a specific material with specific cutting tools, that might be a completely different solution. So uh, just keep that in mind is, is all of these things can be optimized so um, um, you know if uh, you know I, I visited a shop one time that did a lot of, of, of uh, 316 stainless in fact a particularly nasty grade of 316 stainless um, it was their own custom 316 alloy well all of their CNC lathes were full of a synthetic oil and they realized now, synthetic oil uh, uh, as coolant in a CNC lathe is pretty expensive, okay? We're talking about thousands of dollars per barrel, okay? But what they discovered by optimizing their operation is that they, they got some benefit from that. And the things that they were looking for uh, were surface finishes and, um, and uh, surface accuracy. So... Um, um, sure, they spent five grand a barrel on the on this oil, and they you know they had fifty machines, and each machine takes a barrel, something like that, and uh, so it's a tremendous investment uh, for a company like that. Uh, but they got some benefit back from that that uh, allowed them to do some things you couldn't do with 
reg, you know, um, more common materials. So, uh, um, so anyway, uh, if you run into trouble, try something different. Um, some guys asked uh, one time about uh, um, kind of uh, natural, um, what would I call it, uh, um, instead of pet petroleum based, that uh, would be nature based, uh, like uh, plant oils, things like that. And yes, these work, okay? Uh, I've been in shops where they used olive oil. Um, I've seen guys use uh, um, uh, rapeseed oil or um, canola oil, uh, which is cheap. You can go down to 7-Eleven and buy some and, uh, and it works, okay? I don't use it because I have a, you know, I've gotten used to the things that I like. Um, so those are options too. So what I encourage guys to do is experiment with the kind of work that you're doing. And, uh, and find what works best for you and what you can get your hands on uh, um, and does the job for you, okay? So anyway, like I said, that's about all I have to say on, uh, on cutting oils and stuff and uh, hopefully it answers some questions for people and maybe gives you a different perspective on, uh, on um, deciding uh, what might work for you and what you're doing. Anyway, thanks for watching um, and I'll catch you guys later.